Hello, today we're here with James from Geekawatt and we're going to build the ultimate PC for me for video editing, computer aided design and a little bit of gaming. You should check out the Geekawatt channel for weekly PC builds with various specs and price points. So James, have you heard of a band called 1023 Megabytes? I haven't. That's probably because they haven't made it to a gig yet. <laughs> oh my god, this is it, video's over, I'm off. <laughs> so what have we got? So, What's so what have we got in store? So, in terms of the spec today, we've got loads of hardware kindly provided by a bunch of manufacturers. First, we've got this, which is a bit of a beast. Yeah. This is from Thermal Take. It's, I believe, inspired by an attack helicopter. It looks amazing. It looks, it looks like a transformer. It will break your back if you don't right, lift it properly. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. And then inside of the case, we've got a 360mm cooler from Thermal Take. Yep. That's going to keep your CPU nice. That's just the cooler? Cool. Yeah, that's just the cooler. Right. The um, processor, or the whole thing? No, just for the processor. Right. Um, so okay. no messing about on that one, got loads of RGB. So there's the processor and there's the cooler. Yeah, so there's the processor. Now, for some of my audience, the processor is going to be a bit of a controversial choice. So we've gone for an i5. This is a six core, 12 thread CPU. It's going to be more than enough for mm -hmm. video editing, more powerful than what you've got for CAD. And for anybody who's kind of out there thinking, wait, the new CPUs are coming soon. We don't really care. We need the best option kind of on the market right now and that's going to be okay. a great choice. Uh, we're going to put the CPU into the motherboard today which is this. All right. So this is from MSI. It's one of the top end Z490 boards so it's packed with loads of features and loads of expansion slots so that if you get any kind of extra PC hardware and stuff you can put it in here and not have to worry. So I'm future proofing you James. I'm looking right. after you for the next five years. Okay. Um, awesome. Now storage, I know storage was a big one for you. Yeah, so video I want to do off SSD. So. Um, and that is exactly what we've got covered today. So we've got a two terabyte Samsung Cubo drive. So it's mm -hmm. going to be a video editing drive, a day-to-day -day drive. And then somewhere, do we know where it is? Oh. We're missing an app. Ah, <laughs> Another one for Windows to go on. We found it. So this is your Windows drive. So it's an M.2 drive. It's NVMe, it's super quick, and it lights up. Oh, wow. Um, There's a window in that case so we can see all the... Yes, See all the bling. there's windows on both sides, which right. means the cables have got to make sure they're nice uh, and tidy. Okay. Um, now we've also got this, which is quite heavy. So this is just your power supply. Right. So that's going to give you 850 watts of 80 plus gold power, which basically means it's really efficient, really quiet. Okay. It's quite expensive, this power supply. Um, so um, the ship cases with no power supply, and is that how it works these days? Yeah, so this case is basically just metal and plastic. Right. Quite expensive, yeah. nice metal and plastic, yeah. but, but nevertheless. All right. Um, if you go over there on your side of the table, yep, yeah, we've got 16 gigabytes of 4,000 megahertz RAM. That's really quick. Uh, and it's white. And it lights up. Okay. <laughs> well, that's awesome. I'm glad everything lights up. Yeah, I, I'm it's glad that you feature. like that because some people don't like it when things yeah, light up. Yeah, no, I think it's okay. Um, and then under the CPU cooler, we've got your graphics card today. Right. So this is from NVIDIA, which I know is kind of like a stipulation for this build. Yeah, so I do some stuff with NVIDIA Jetson platform, which is mostly um, a small computer for GPU, basically for machine learning. My current graphics card is a GTX 1060, because running HTC Vive is 90 frames a second in both eyes at once. So yeah, there's some GPU requirements. Now this 2070 Super as well is also a lot more powerful than your 1060. Mm -hmm. So NVIDIA have just brought out some new 3000 series cards, but they're all out of stock. So, so the 2070 Super it is, but this is one of the top end 2070 Supers. Uh, it's from MSI, it's got their triple fan cooler, and guess what? Lights up. Okay, that'll be fine. Okay. Everything in this build lights up. Yeah, awesome. And I think that kind of covers off all the parts. So let's put it together. All right, righty ho. There we go. So this is probably the most delicate bit of the whole process, as you probably know, is actually putting the CPU into the motherboard. Bit of a maze. <laughs> the, box, the box is gone. Well, um, there's no pins on this. They don't have pins on anymore. What no, so Intel work? put Magic. the pins on the motherboard instead. Oh, okay. So that makes it quite delicate. So we don't remove the black cover. So you want to lift the arm up next to it. This one. Yep. So push so it, push so it a little, down. Be a latch, right? That's so it. it pops out. Yeah, and then carefully lift the whole socket cover back. This one? Yeah. This way? That's it, yeah, spot on. And don't touch the pins. That will end badly. <laughs> yep, oh, I see, okay. So they're like little sprung, are they sprung or like pogo pins? Oh. Can James find the gold triangle? What print's it on? And where's the triangle on here? Uh, it's on the uh, socket the little, cover. Yeah. Uh, circle. So right. you're going to lift the CPU up by the sides 
and then very gently sort of drop it into place. There we go, that looks pretty spot on to me. You're spot on. Right. So then pop the cover back down and then pop the retention arm and the black cover will just pop off. There we go. Yeah, okay. Oops. Sorry, that's really tight actually. Yeah, you have to give it a bit of force, a bit of pressure. All right. And that's the hardest bit. All right, the whole PC is built, pretty much. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> that is the hardest bit of the whole video. So, right, um, next up, you want to install your RAM into the motherboard, which I think you've got. Oh, yeah, the light-up RAM. The light-up RAM. So to do this, you want to take the RAM out of the box first, and then we're going to pull back the clips on our second and fourth dim slots. The dim slots are, of course, the ones next to the socket. Look at those. How nice are they? So Thermal Take hooked it up. Their white RAM is, is pretty mad, um, and it also lights up, so. And then you just gotta line the notch on the RAM up with the notch on your motherboard. This one and the other one, all right. That's it. This doesn't look like RAM, does it? It looks like <laughs> some sort of future. The future's now, I don't know. The future is here. God, look at that. It's amazing. It is really nice. Like the, I think the, the white tough RAM is the best, like the best looking RAM there is out there. Controversial statement. There we wow, go. Wow, look at that, right. Now then, we're kind of advancing quite nicely with our motherboard assembly, and the next thing we're gonna do is install our M.2 storage. Now this is another controversial point of today's video, but we're not actually gonna put that heatsink back on, because it would hide the RGB of the drive, which is obviously no good. Oh. <laughs> so we wanna be able to All see right, the RGB of the drive. Right, need a spare parts. Right, you we know. do. So you should now see a little standoff above the top PCIe slot, uh, cl that close to you, this? close to you. The oh, this. No, nope. in off. between that, that one. one. Yes. In. Sorry. Yeah. Yep. So we're gonna take the screw out and gonna keep that very safe because we're gonna install that in a second. All right. So what's the difference between this and a like a three and a half inch SSD? Is it just the physical? Yeah. Thing? No. So what it is is actually the interface. So uh, SATA, which is what you'd use for like a traditional SSD, okay, has a six gigabit per second limit. Right. Uh, NVMe can go way higher than that. Oh, really? So that drive could be like three, four gigabytes oh, okay. a second. So I think the Jetson Xavier NX has got a slot for something like this on the bottom. I'm already quite jealous about how good this PC is going to look. It's going to look so good. So the next thing that we're going to do, I think, is actually go ahead and install the motherboard into the case. Okay. Yeah, I like that. He's put an action man inside looking out with two little joysticks. <laughs> like he's driving. Uh, you can see here we've got our black PCIe slots at the back. And what that means is we're going to mount the graphics card vertically. So you'll actually be able to see it in all of its glory rather than it just be kind of side on. So we do actually have a PCIe riser cable. Oh, okay. Um, so it literally just slots into the top or the second slot of our motherboard and then folds upwards. Cool, Good. so what we're actually gonna do now is we're gonna install the motherboard into the case. And to do this, we need to check basically that the holes uh, on the top, the middle, and the bottom of the motherboard line up with the black standoffs that are in our case. In a bit of a Blue Peter moment, here's one I prepared earlier, and they're all in, they're all in the right place and ready to go. Okay, are they? Yeah, right, I think so. So, um, no need for a cut. Not at all. It's already done, good. Well, nothing's changed here. I thought they might have another fancy way of, you know, latching motherboards yeah. into cases these days, but still standoffs and screws. Like yeah, you know. sometimes, like, you'll get standoffs that are actually kind of raised, so this, the okay. centre one will be like a post, or it'll be, like, have a rim on it, so that'll hold the board in place. So that is actually really quite simple. Right. I think the next kind of best course of action is to install the power supply and do some of the cables now, while everything is still easy to access. All right, then. A dual 6 plus 2 pin graphics card power connector. Let me just pop this in here. We do indeed. There we go. A SATA power cable, so that's going to power up our 2.5 and 3.5 mm -hmm. inch drives. All right. Then, as well as that, we're going to need a motherboard power cable. That's the biggest of the bunch. It's in. So, what we've got to now do is basically plug one end of the power cables up to the power supply and the right. other to the motherboard. Now, some ends are different. So in that one, we want that end. Have it. There we go, right. Yep, CPU, yeah. so yeah, those ends. Yeah, so we want to route these through the hole at the bottom of the case. We're then going to cable manage them up the chassis, and then they're going to go through the appropriate holes to the motherboard. Uh, and you might be able to Velcro them down because there's a Velcro strap. Because it's a super high-end motherboard, it needs extra power for the processor. 
for overclocking and no, stability good. and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> this case is a bit. Glad of I brought a trolley. Yeah, I know. That's good. Good decision, actually. Now, before we get too carried away with the CPU cooler, which is a 360 mil TH360, it's brand new from Thermal Take. These are quite difficult to get their hands on at the moment. We need to remove this front bit of the chassis. Okay. So you should see three screws on that side, and then another three on this side. Now we've got to make sure that we can kind of plan this so that. The actual, we've got enough room to just about kind of maneuver the radiator back right, in. Yeah. Um, so if you remember, this was kind of this was in the case this way. So we need to install the radiator at the back and then the fans at the front. So yeah, that is basically full of special liquid uh, that's right. going to use the copper heat heat plate to kind of transfer all the heat away from your CPU and through the radiator fins. So, so this spin way. it. Nope. Spin it all the way around. That way. Yep. That oh, way. That's the inside. Right. Yeah. Got you. Um, and what you're going to do is you're going to use the fans to actually screw the radiator into place. Oh, I see. But especially with a case like this, it's not just about what you need. It's about making the case look kind of full. Yeah, absolutely. When it's full of holes, uh, windows, you know. Yeah. You might as well put the blingy bling in. Yeah. yeah. Now then, the next thing that we need to do is install the CPU water block itself onto the cooler. But before we do that, we need to kind of build a back plate that that can fasten into. Right. You can take your head, your head shield off if you like. <laughs> so sure. we've got the back plate in, James has holding that in place. We next need to pop these little black spacers on. Okay. So you see, they've got teeth on one side, the teeth want to go to the motherboard side. Right. And they go through each of the posts, so there's just four there. Okay, so now that the back plate assembly, as we're going to call it, is in, we need to whack a little bit of thermal paste onto the CPU. And that's going to form basically like a conductive layer between the processor and the cooler. Okay. Basically, so not too much, a bit more than a grain of rice. So really not much. Oh, right. So I've got that back plate, it's fine. Feels like it's taken. Yeah. You got it? There you go. And then I'll take it off and you can tighten those up one by one. Okay. Now then, the fans are actually going to daisy chain together with the RGB controller. Right. Uh, so we need to grab all the cables basically from the CPU water block and we're going to thread these through to the back of the motherboard. So I think I can probably... Oh! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> now that needs to go to a fan header on the motherboard that's labelled AIO Pump. So that one needs to go to CPU Fan 1. You probably don't even need to unravel those cables either because we're just going to tuck the controller probably along the bottom of the case here okay. somewhere. Yeah, so the drive is so... just behind the motherboard. So I think we're going to be all right. So they're not going in the front like in an old PC with five and a quarter inch drive bays. We're pretty much nearly there actually. All we need to yeah. do is install the graphics card, but first let's put in the rest of our storage. Okay. Now this... <laughs> oh God. At least it's solid state. Now this is a two terabyte SSD that is solid state, so it's going to have survived the, uh, the journey there. And this was very kindly sent out by Samsung. This is going to be a great editing drive. Not as quick as the other SSD, but still Plenty quick enough. Mm -hmm. So that is going to mount on one of those sleds behind the motherboard. If you unscrew that thumb screw at the top. Should we turn this round? I think so. <laughs> that really hurt my eye, that did. <laughs> Come on. It is a good job you brought the trolley. Right. There we go. Right, go for that one. And your SATA port's at the bottom. So. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Yeah, my first hard drive I ever had was 40 megabytes. <laughs> that, that, that probably predates me. That was, uh, yeah, because it was like 19, about 95 or 6, I think. Lovely. And then you want to give it power okay. with uh, the SATA power cable we left over for ourselves earlier. Good hope. Ah, there we go. Cool. So nothing's so changed here with all these tiny pins and the lovely pin headers. When it comes to JFP1, the only really kind of important connector is actually your power switch. In the old uh, days, we used to have the clock speed displayed on the thing that's 66. Really? Yeah. And you had a turbo switch that had a switch on the motherboard that would slow down the processor for old games that ran too fast. 
because some like driving games, if you ran them on a new PC, it would be too fast to drive, so you had to press turbo. Oh, so the speed, speed of the car, the speed of the lap was tied to the clock speed yeah. of the process. Oh my goodness. And then you had, um, yeah, the display and a turbo switch, and you had to configure your display for them, right? And you could lie and say you had like a 66 megahertz processor when you had 33. <laughs> Now, this 2070 Super is going to be good enough for a bit of 1440p gaming at some high frame rates, actually. I know you're more kind of editing as opposed to gaming, yeah, but... Yeah, I do. Well, I do VR. Yeah, VR. Perfect so, card for VR. Yeah. So I've got some other NVIDIA products. These are the ones that I use. So when I talk about GPU, even though I do a bit of gaming and, you know, uh, CAD will use GPU for the graphic rendering. I'm doing GPU at the moment, something I've just got into for deep learning. So I've got the NVIDIA... Jetson Nano, in this case, is just this credit card size board that's on here. Yeah. And that's a whole computer. Uh -huh. So it's like a Raspberry Pi but with GPU for doing deep learning. So I've also got the Xavier NX. This one's about, uh, I think it's $379 or something. Like £379 in the UK, I should say. So this one's the same size, pretty much. So the processor is just this piece and the rest is the carrier board. So it's a whole computer with HDMI and network and everything like USB. Um, so this one has eight CPU cores, 16 gig of RAM, and wow. 512 CUDA cores. So basically a, a lot of GPU, so it's much, much faster than the Nano. And you can run the deep learning stuff on your normal PC, but obviously you need the whole PC and, uh, and a graphics card. For training yeah. neural nets, you probably want to do it on this because it's five times faster. But, but as, a, as an entry into messing about and Oh yeah, absolutely. And just a Nano cheaper. two gig is just for that, $59. You can train a model on it. Cool, so if you want to clip this in, we're going to pop it in the top slot, I think it's probably sensible. Okay, and are these all PCIe? They are indeed. So you could put multiple graphics yes. cards in if you can power them, and then you could mm. do like a cluster of... Yeah, so for gaming applications, NVIDIA have kind of... SLI is kind of coming to the end of its life, right. so multi-GPU for gaming is not really what okay. it was anymore. But if you're doing video rendering or yeah. CAD or video editing, then deep actually... Learning. Yeah. Deep learning, exactly. There we go, lovely right. stuff. Now we also need to grab like a PCIe support bracket okay. uh, to, in, to make sure the graphics card yeah, kind of so nice that's and going in these, these slots that way round. Mm. Oh yeah, exactly. so we don't want to be hanging the whole thing on there, I guess. No, it, it, I have done it before, but yeah. in terms of like, especially taking this home, it's probably not a good idea. So this kind of works like a motherboard standoff. And what it's going to do is it's going to basically hold the other oh, end really of the riser right. cable into place. So we're going to screw the riser cable into this. Oh, okay. And um, then this goes, where's the, oh, it's there, right. Yeah. So it goes and it holds it like there's a slot. Exactly. Oh, I've done it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. So we're going to give it some power as well. It's looking pretty good. I think that vertical mount Still makes got. it. Yeah. <laughs> James has forgot one of the RGB cables. That's that the, uh, goes in the daisy chain. This goes on through there. Hang on then, hang on, hang on. Okay. There we go. Oh, look at this lit up. Look at that. That's promising. Yes, I got it home in one piece. Everything still works, despite a few knocks that it had while we were building it. So thanks again to James at GeekWatt. You should check out the GeekWatt YouTube channel for weekly PC builds, all sorts of specs and price points, and also all the latest stuff, so all the latest specification. And he's got links in his video descriptions to all of the parts if you want to buy them and build any of the PCs. All right, that's all for now.